In this video, I want to show you that you can simplify radicals using a factor tree, or I would eventually like you to be very good at recognizing perfect squares or perfect cubes. Okay, of course, the numbers we work with the most are perfect squares. And these are numbers 4, 9, 16. We talked about that in an earlier video. And then we also work with perfect cubes a good bit. Perfect cubes are numbers such as 8, 27, 64, 125, etc. And I told you about making a little index card to try to help you get familiar with these numbers. And so this was the index card and list some numbers, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. And then you square those numbers, cube all those numbers, take those numbers to the fourth, and you will get familiar with which are the perfect squares or the perfect cubes. So let's begin with the square root of 72. And let's simplify this by using the factor tree. What most students do is they will just start dividing it by 2. So 72, when I divide it by 2, that'd be 2 times 36. I'll take 36, divide that by 2, I will get 18. I will take 18, divide that by 2, and I will get 9. And of course, 9 can't be divided by 2, but 9 is 3 times 3. And then they group anything that they have 2 of. What comes out from underneath the radical is I had that this pair of 2's, this pair of 3's, then I have this 2 left over that will stay underneath the radical. Your answer is 2 times 3, that would be 6, radical 2. So that is solving the square root of 72 by the factor tree. There are many ways to solve this, but I try to get used to dividing this number by 2 or 3 to see if I can quickly get to a nice large perfect square. When I take 72 divided by 2, I get 36. And if I am familiar with my perfect squares, I realize 36 is perfect, it gets out of jail, and when it gets out of jail, it is a new and reformed number. It is just 6, and then radical 2 hangs out. Same answer. Radical 300. I like to divide it by 2. That would be 150. 150 is not one of my perfect numbers. I divide it by 3, and yes, I do get 100. So that puts a smile on my face. I know that I can break that down to 100 times 3, and radical 100 is perfect. It is perfect of 10. So when it comes out from underneath the radical, it will be 10, and then I will just have radical 3 hanging out. But once again, we could do this by the factor tree. Now, some students may notice that they could quickly get to 100 here. But if not, if they just started dividing it by 2, that would be 2 times 150. 150 can be divided by 2. It would be 2 times 75. 75 cannot be divided by 2, so I will think about 3. 3 can. That would be 3 times 25. And then 25, I can't divide it by 2 or 3, I'll go up to 5, and it is 5 times 5. Then once again, I circle my pairs of numbers. I have a pair of 2's. I have a pair of 5's. So that's what's going to come out, the 2 and the 5. That will come out from underneath the radical. I will still have a 3 left in there. And 2 times 5 is 10, radical 3. Okay, radical 288. My method, I would divide it by 2, I would divide it by 3. I'm hoping to get a nice, big, perfect square. When I take 288 divided by 2, I get 144. And if I'm familiar with my perfect squares, I know that's exactly what I wanted. 144 times 2 is 288. 144 is perfect of 12. So when it comes out from underneath the radical, it will just be 12, because 12 times 12 is 144. My answer is 12 radical 2. But once again, the factor tree method still works 
I would take 2 times 144. Maybe you would recognize 144 right then and know that that would be 12 times 12. If not, you would continue. You get 2 times 72. That would be 2 times 36. Maybe you could stop now because you knew 36 was 6 times 6. If not, you would just keep going. 18 is 2 times 9. And then 9 is 3 times 3. And I would circle my pairs of numbers. So I have a pair of 2's, another pair of 2's. That 2 does not have a partner, and I have a pair of 3's. So that 2 will come out, and this 2, and then this 3. Then this radical 2 here would be left underneath the radical. Outside the radical, I have 2 times 2 times 3, which will be 12 radical 2. And the same factor tree method works with cubics, except instead of circling pairs of numbers in my factor tree, I would want to find triples. Now, how would I do it? I would have become familiar with my cube roots, which are numbers like 2 to the 3rd is 8, 3 to the 3rd is 27, 4 to the 3rd is 64. And I would know that the cube root of 54, well, divide it by 2, I get 27. And yes, that would make me smile. So it would be the cube root of 27 times 2 is the same thing as cube root of 54. And 27 is a perfect cube. And when it comes out, it would be 3. So I would get 3 on the cube root of 2. Now, doing this by the factor tree, I would just change this to 2 times 27. And 27, I'd break down to 3 times 9. 9 can be broken down to 3 times 3. That's all I can break it down. And I would circle the triples of numbers. So here I have three threes. And then I have this two. So I can take out the three outside the radical. And then the two has to remain underneath there. But don't forget, this is not a square root. This is a cube root. So you do have to make sure you put the cube root of two on there. And yes, you do get the same answer. So I wanted to do this video to let you know that nothing's wrong with doing the factor tree. But once we start adding and subtracting radicals, it's nice to be able to get to the answer a little faster. But until then, if the factor tree floats your boat, you go for it.